Hello, Stephen. Good afternoon. Here in Europe, it's night. Uh -huh. So I'm here to uh, introduce you to Loida Connors. She's a member of the Association of Spanish Victims of Jehovah Witnesses. And uh, we are very proud to, to uh, have her on your uh, show to introduce you all this big victory we had in Europe. Great. It's a pleasure to meet you. So I celebrate that. My understanding was that you were just speaking your experiences and then the group sued you. And uh, so you responded to the suit and the court found in your favor uh, that the group is problematic. Is that correct? Yes, uh, there's been several uh, suits. Uh, one, one case was from Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses against the newspaper El Mundo in the first place, um, accusing them of using the word destructive sect, calling them sect. So they, they demanded that they had to rectify, they had to correct that. You know? El Mundo initially lost that, but they uh, made an appeal. And in the meantime, before the second trial is celebrated, uh, we had all these big victories uh, of the lawsuits that the Jehovah's Witnesses put against the AEVTJ. I think we should get an easier, <laughs> right. easier name for the association. But yeah, is the is the Jehovah's Witnesses Victims Spanish Association. Um, so yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses sued the association first as a whole for existing, basically, and then they sued the president of the association, Israel Flores. Uh, they sued the secretary, Enrique Carmona, and they sued one of the victims, uh, Gabriel Pedrero, right? Although these uh, uh, trials were celebrated before spring or around spring, uh, it took quite a long time for the sentence to come out. And the first one to come out was the one against Enrique Carmona. And in this, in this uh, trial, the judge uh, dismissed most of the Jehovah's Witnesses claims, except precisely this one, uh, of calling them destructive sect because Enrique Carmona had compared them with a, like a silent disease that when you get it, you don't realize. And by the time you realize you have it, it's incurable, right? Uh, which I think it was a fairly good example, but I think they took it too literally. Uh, yeah, and, and I don't it, think it's incurable because obviously I help people get out. Exactly. Well, right. let's hope we can recover from this. Right. <laughs> That's quite an ordeal, though. It, it may take forever, but yes. Right. Anyway, so this this judge said uh, you couldn't call them sect or, or or dangerous cult or dangerous sect because in Spain they have the recognition of uh, religion. They are they are in a register as an official existing religious group or religious uh, confession, right? Yeah, uh, religious denomination. Religious yeah. denomination, and they say they they are deeply rooted in our culture yeah. and accepted socially. So you just cannot call them cult or sect. Uh, but the witnesses had asked for many other things, like remove all these videos from the internet, um, publish the sentence, um, remove the word victim from your uh, denomination in the association. All, all kinds of, of demands that were dismissed, except just this one, yeah? So we can say this case was gained, was was won in, I don't know, 90% to say something, yeah? Uh -huh. and Loida. 99, yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know how you measure these things, but yeah, I mean, only one, one thing was acknowledged, was this one, and then Enrique Carbona was sentenced to pay 5,000 euros uh, to the witnesses, which the association has appealed, and we're waiting yeah, mm. for that process to continue. Then came out the next sentence, which was uh, the one about the trial against the whole association. And again, the same. They wanted the association to cease to exist, basically, to remove all the info they had published in their webpage, 
to remove all the any YouTube, Instagram, any social media publications that they demand that the, their honor be restored and all kinds of things. Yeah. And the great victory was that the whole uh, requests, all, all of it was um, dismissed by the judge. They said, no, because there was this big uh, issue, which is very well explained in the in the sentence about the difference between true and truthful, we can say. Yeah? There's these words, verdad, which is the truth, and yeah. verdad, which is that something that rings true, that is truthful, yeah? Which is not necessarily the same. Yeah, you want to say something? Yes, it is called in English the veracity. Okay, veracity, and yeah. You have the information. Yeah, so the judge explained that the truth is based on facts, on reality. And veracity, not necessarily. It has to be based to a certain degree in facts as well, but also has room for opinion or for um, subjective interpretation of the victim or, you know, so it's something that you feel is true and it rings true, but maybe it's not 100% true, but very close to the truth, we can say, yeah? So um, with that explanation, uh, it was very, well, it, it was a very um, subtle uh, distinction, but the good thing is also that the, the judge, this judge, which is not the same as from the previous uh, trial, this judge uh, made a very thorough investigation of what's in the, in the web of lots of declarations from victims. She heard also the, the plaintiffs, uh, but most, of, most important of all, she also read loads of literature from Jehovah's Witnesses themselves. And also some videos recorded by the governing body, all these broadcastings that they do nowadays and stuff. So it is very clear, although all the witnesses there, the Jehovah's Witnesses declaring said, no, yeah, yeah, it's very easy to leave this religion. You just go and that's it. You just write a letter and that's it. And yes, it's true that you just write a letter and that's it. But what they don't explain is the consequences of writing this letter, which is that the, your family turns their back on you, your friends disappear, and you've grown up in a very close bubble and in this bubble, you are discouraged to make any contacts with people who are not Jehovah's Witnesses. You are discouraged to get a higher education, which means that when you leave this association, you're completely unprepared to live a normal life because you don't know how to make friends. You've never had a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You don't have a proper job. You don't have a means to, to make a living. And then even your parents or your brothers or your any relatives, close friends disappear from the landscape. And that's why so many people get so depressed. Some even commit suicide. Some just, just don't know how to go because you've lived with a manual your whole life that said very clearly, you can do this, you cannot do that. You can do this, you cannot do that. Well, most of it is you can't, you can't, you can't. Um, and then you can't do anything you want, but you don't even know if you want because nobody ever asks you what you want. You know? Right. If I may add, just I know that they believe in corporal punishment and they as well. don't want to allow children to be children. They want them to act like they're adults. So they yep. train children to be obedient instead of proper parenting and healthy religion that encourages children to explore, to ask questions, mm -hmm. to make mistakes, to play to have contact with people from other religions and you're not allowed to go into a church or any other religion and they indoctrinate children, very young children with so many phobias about Armageddon, yeah. you know, being destroyed by judgment that the phobias are in members' minds, even when they leave, Every time they hear a news story, there's an earthquake, there's a flood, that programming gets triggered. Yep, and I you get super stressed. Back. I have to, you know, they, they yeah. maybe they're, they're right. And it's yeah. horrible child abuse from my experience. Yeah. Stephen, Stephen, we all know about these you just commented. And uh, I must tell you that since the decision, the judgment, 
uh, came out uh, throughout Europe, we received so many letters, messages from ex-Jehovah Witnesses saying it was the first Christmas gift they ever had. Birthday and Christmas. Birthday, yeah. <laughs> I, I've talked to people who were thrown out of the group because they gave a birthday card to a non-member. Imagine or that. Because yeah. they wanted to have a blood transfusion because their child was going to die. And they were being pressured not to, to help their child. And I've counseled parents whose children died because they listened to the elders. And then they woke up and they were like, how could we have ever, you know, not done what our conscience told us yeah. and of course i explained brainwashing and mind control yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's... I, I i actually keep working on that and i quit i i was born jehovah's witness and i quit when i was 22 years old but feeling guilty i quit because i wasn't fulfilling i wasn't ob uh, obeying every principle and i thought i don't want to deceive anybody if i don't do things properly i'd rather not do it so i just left I, I was in england back then and when i came back to spain and they saw me that i was smoking in the street then they disfellowshipped me yeah and all these years i was looking somewhere else i didn't want to i didn't even want to think about religion i tried to stop believing in god i couldn't i couldn't manage i still believe in god but um don't know why <laughs> good the thing is i tried to 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 leave this away for, as far from me as possible which is impossible because your family is still in there but i just discovered everything was a scam that's my personal opinion of course um last spring like in march you know i i found out about the australian royal commission right and about how yeah can it, can it, can, exactly and i just couldn't believe it and i thought oh my god i've been feeling like guilty you know and now that i think that everything was a lie the the intensity of the brainwashing is so deep that it's funny because i'm still following some groups of ex jehovah's witnesses that support each other some chats and stuff and some people said yeah yeah and now that i know it's all a lie and i i regret that i'm not having my paradise on earth yeah and i said you know I don't because I never quite looked forward to the paradise. I thought it was kind of weird a place just full of Jehovah's Witnesses, the whole world. I thought, oh my God. And it's a fantasy but, anyway. It's not. Yeah, really but I thought, but I want my Armageddon, you know, I want my, I want justice. I want my Armageddon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, so I my, just... my point is 30 years later, after I quit, I still want my Armageddon, you know. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's always good to have humor as a recovery yeah. strategy. But I want yeah. to just add for your listeners, if I may, that in 1988, when my book Combating Cult Mind Control first came out, and it was later translated into Spanish uh, in Spain, I think in 1990, people started writing to me, a uh, great book, it was so helpful, uh, but how come you didn't mention the Watchtower Society of the Jehovah's Witnesses? And I'm like, why uh -huh. should I have mentioned them? And they're like, are you kidding me? You described the entire organization in your book. And I said, I did. And they're like, yeah. And I said, teach me. So I started meeting former members and they started explaining. And the more mm -hmm. I learned, the more horrified I was by the watchtower yeah. in the meantime because i hadn't mentioned the jehovah's witnesses the book wasn't on their bad list which is another feature of a mind control cult there mm -hmm. are spiritual pornography you can't read those books in any case so many people have read my book and, and left the witnesses and I'm told that aside from Raymond Franz, who, as you know, is the governing body uh, mm -hmm. member, 60 year plus member leader, aside from his book, my book was the number two for helping oh, people wow. to wake up and get out of this cult. So I'm very honored and pleased that I could help I so many people. I have to read it. I have to read it. Definitely. I did read Cr uh, Crisis of Conscience, but I haven't read yours yet. 
Okay, I'm, um, I'm fairly new to these. Yeah? I have an updated edition that I bought the rights back, and the latest is 2018. And if you okay. have trouble finding it, uh, I'm I'm looking for a Spanish publisher, but um um we can talk offline. I can send you a digital. Yeah, yeah. Copy. Maybe, uh, maybe, yeah, I, I can just. Uh... Hope it ready for Barcelona this summer, Stephen. So hmm. we uh, broadly distribute it in Spain. Okay. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. <laughs> then, and then I want to just comment, if I may, that because I've been helping people get out of cults since I left the Moonies in 1976, cults are bullies. And they have a lot of power and they have a lot of money and they try to control information. Uh, one of the things about the witnesses is they knock on the door, want to study the Bible, but they don't explain their version of the Bible is not respected by any theologian. Therefore, there's no informed consent. And so aside from the deceptive recruitment, which the Moonies would do also, they like to threaten ex-members with lawsuits. Uh, the Moonies sued the Daily Mail in, the, in, in England for writing two articles about that the Moonies brainwash and they separate people from their families. In England... If you lose a lawsuit, you have to pay expenses for the other side that you sued. And the Moonies had to pay $2 million to the London oh, wow. Daily Mail because they lost the suit. The judges found brainwashing and and separation. Yeah. So, But this kind of bullying strategy to harass, try to take away people's freedom of speech, to share their own experience, to be whistleblowers... It's a very common tactic uh, by authoritarians. Of course, if you're a dictator, you can arrest people and send them to Siberia, you know, and sentence them for decades. But in, in civilized countries, we still have rule of law that protects citizens from saying, this was my experience, this is detrimental <laughs> to the public. And we have a right to to shine a, a spotlight on this organization. So yeah, kudos uh, to you and your organization. And and I think that the internet has changed everything. Because in the old days, they always told you that these fellowship people were bad and they're gone and that's it. You, you never saw them again. Or they told you, oh, they're very bad people. Don't mix with them. Bad influence. They're not up to any any good. Yeah. Uh, but now you can communicate with people and most of the these fellowship people I have found are just normal people who are very hurt and who need support and that's it. And most of them still live like witnesses because when you live your whole life from childhood till 20s, 30s, 40s in a certain way, it's quite unlikely that you just quit everything and do the opposite of everything you've done because, you, you know, it's just grown on you. Right, but uh, I I realized that yeah, it's just basically lots of people who need help and who don't have any resources to help themselves, and who need attention and to be heard, and I think these victories can can change a lot um, how they feel, because you think okay, I'm a victim, I've been mm, manipulated all these years, right, but now somebody finally hurt hurt us, yeah, right, and, and one th one thing that the judge said on this. Uh, association sentence was that the government should take action um, to protect the family and to protect the freedom of religion because if once you quit they forbid everybody to talk to you it's a way of um, not allowing you to exert your right to free religion exactly they're discriminating you apart from discrimination of women that have very little role in their witnesses all this excessive control, all these uh, gay, lesbian, transsexual, forget it. That's uh, uh, that's a no-no. Family uh, part. That's what uh, uh, another thing the judge said. The Jehovah Witnesses break apart families. Yeah. yeah. 
They do. But I, I, I if I may, you. I'll just say as a mental health professional, people are hurt and mental health professionals are not trained to understand cults and mind control and a specialized form of counseling that's required to help people to understand what makes this group so harmful and how the brainwashing took place. It's a dissociative disorder. Hmm. So I created an online course for mental health professionals to start learning uh, to help them. And, and I'll lastly say, maybe not last, because I may say something else, but uh, that people coming out of the witnesses are very vulnerable to being recruited by other destructive authoritarian cults. So yes. there are many people that I hear of who get caught up in conspiracy theories, multi-level marketing cults. Anti-vaccine um, groups. Yeah, and abusive relationships with men who uh, act, you know, because that's how they were trained as women uh, to 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 submit themselves to men who speak yeah. with authority. And, and totalitarian extremist political groups too. Like the cult of Trump, which is over <laughs> my shoulder. Yeah, or the, they call it in Spanish, tierra planistas, you know, the people that believe that the earth is flat, whatever, anything. It flat could earth. be a diet, could be anything. But yep. you tend to get this kind of obsessive uh, behavior um, to and be black told what and to white, do. All or nothing, good versus evil, us versus yep. them thinking, which is yep. characteristic of growing up in a group like this. And it takes a lifetime to get rid of that, believe me. I mean, I've been so many years. It doesn't away take from a them. lifetime if you have proper counseling, is what I okay. have to say. Maybe that's great news. If I can say uh, about counseling, uh, Stephen, in Spain with the Federation Redune, we have a team of psychologists that you might know, Jose Miguel Cuevas Barranquero, who uh, he's uh, the psychologist taking care of Patricia Aguilar, the young uh, woman who was detained in the Amazon forest by a guru. And uh, he's uh, very famous in Spain. Uh, Jose Miguel Cuevas Ramanquero has formed some uh, psychologists of our team in uh, Redune in Spain that hopefully you will meet in Barcelona. Oh, because... absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. I can only speak for my expertise of what I've learned in my books, et cetera, and unfortunately have been unable to read Spanish uh, to know what what they've developed in terms of their counseling approach. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what's recommended, but I can also say that in the association, there are I think two or three at least uh, psychologists that have been witnesses from childhood. Uh huh. The, I oh. knew of two when I entered the association. It was Mikea Senares and Dina. I can't remember her surname. And, and the and other day joined the um, organization, another another one who was volunteering to help. And that's a problem because most of us don't have a higher education. It's very hard to find right. a psychologist that knows about cults or about this cult in particular. So it saves a lot of time to talk about your problems with somebody who knows what you've been through, you know, because uh, he's been through the same. A thousand percent, a thousand percent. I do want to mention, I did a consult with a woman who, you know, left the Jehovah's Witnesses, became a psychologist, but she wanted a consult about her husband. And she never learned about brainwashing and mind control, never did the, the homework. And she was taken over by this guy. It's what in talking with me, she realized, oh my goodness, I need to do my homework and learn about brainwashing. Yeah. And I have been to other psychologists before. Uh, and it, it wasn't very helpful because of this, because they di didn't have a specific uh, um, education to deal with this kind of problem. Yeah. The Secretary then... of the Association, the Spanish Jehovah Witnesses Victims in Spain, Enrique Carmona. Uh, became a psychologist. He studied psychology in order to help other victims uh, in Spain. And uh, I wanted to ask you, Stephen, um, 
I was looking for the word in English when uh, cult, sect, are uh, suing um, critics, uh, whistleblowers, and uh, victims or their cults. Uh, a slap, is that the word? A slap? Uh, slap suit. Slap suit. S L A P P. Yes, that's it. Is that slap? I'm not an expert on slap suits, but uh, it can be applied to any group, I think, that is coordinating um, to do um, antisocial things, I believe. Mm -mm. Okay. I think okay. you can Google S-L-A-P-P -P in, in capital letters and get a better definition than I just Juicio, thought. Uh, Juicio Mordaza. Procedimiento mm. more. Thank you very much, Stephen, for having us in your show in your uh, uh, in uh, Massachusetts. My pleasure. Thank, thank yes. you for your good work. Yes. And thank you very much. Success, and uh, maybe uh, we can meet at uh, in ba Barcelona in July. Hopefully, I'm planning to attend as well. So maybe we can meet in person, all of us. Wonderful. Great. Excellent. Thank you thank very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. Great bye -bye. pleasure. Take care. All the good okay. work, Stephen. Thank you. And you too. Both of you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.